Greetings, I am Herbert Herbaderp, and February is over, and you know what that means. That's right, it's March. Also, it's time for another Ask a Herbert Herbaderp, where you, people who are not Herbert Herbaderp, ask me, who is Herbert Herbaderp, some questions. And answers will most likely follow the questions. Let's get right to it. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, There have been old kits with glow-in-the-dark parts, for example vintage monsters by Aurora. Wouldn't that be helpful in case you accidentally drop those parts on the floor? You know, it probably would be, and I do remember seeing kits like that. I think there was a ghost pirate ship by Ravel or something like that. That's what I remember. I never had one, but I wonder if the plastic those kits were made out of is like a different kind of plastic to what they're usually made of, and if it's worse. Not really sure it would be worth the trade-off if it's an awful material. I guess really the best thing to do is just not drop the parts on the floor. Or maybe clean the floor so well that there's absolutely nothing for the parts to hide behind or under. Mm, who am I kidding, that's never happening. I have actually considered making an apron of some sort that would attach to the desk, but I've never put that into practice. Trekan Belovich said, Can idiots be covered in mud to hide their lack of details just like plastic tracks? I think sometimes that works, but it could be considered illegal depending on where you live. Also, I think, because idiots tend to be quite loud, and might resist, you'd have to use a lot of mud and apply it very quickly. Possibly with some sort of mechanical aid. It seems like a lot of work. The man said, red crayon or blue crayon flavour? Neither. I'm a rebel. I'll take pink crayon. Mm. Spanish boy said, if you had to move to a different city, what would it be? Hmm. I mean, if I'm being forced to move, a nearby city would be ideal and probably not involve high moving costs. So like Gold Coast or Caloundra or something? I haven't really given this sort of thing a lot of thought because it doesn't seem like a possibility in reality. But I think I'd like to live somewhere in Europe or maybe Canada. Not the US though. I don't want to die because I can't afford thousands of dollars for insulin, and I don't want to get shot either. Maybe Edinburgh or London? Somewhere where it doesn't get especially hot and is pretty close to a bunch of other stuff so that I could go and visit all of the other interesting places without it taking 500 hours flying to get there, like everything does from here. Martin Gotham shared this picture and said, how can I improve? I'm not much on figure painting or telling others how to improve, but I would definitely suggest better lighting. This is backlit and that makes it really hard to see what's going on. Place the lights behind the camera, obviously not so the camera blocks the light and casts the model in shadow, but you want the light to be shining on the model so that we can see the model. I guess it's pretty common sense, but it's not intuitive to everybody, so maybe it's helpful. As for the painting, because of the lighting it's really hard to tell what's going on, and the question is really vague to begin with. What areas do you think need improvement? Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, Have you seen the latest Nintendo Direct? If so, what were your thoughts? I don't think I've ever watched a Nintendo Direct, and I don't have any Nintendos, and don't really have a lot of interest in watching what seems to be quite a long presentation on their new releases and such. I never really watch any video game things like that. They don't really do anything for me. I guess they're meant to get you all hyped and stuff, but I'm not really into hype culture or whatever they call it, so I just don't watch. Lutanton said, How do you film your videos? Slash, how do you have your camera set up so you get good angles of the building process for videos? I have, in the past, thought about making a video on how I make videos, but it really seems like a lot of extra work that I'm not sure would be of a huge interest to a lot of people, and I would need an extra camera to film it too. But basically what I do, I build the models on stream, and I've got two camera setups for that. The overhead camera the stream sees is a webcam, which is suspended from a shelf above my desk, with a friction arm connected to a flexible mounting thing. It's kind of annoying to have to change position of that camera, so thankfully I almost never have to. It is a bit dodgy, but it works, so it's fine until it doesn't work, I guess. Then for what you actually see in the videos, I use my phone, which is in a mount attached to a desk mounted arm thing, and unless I forget, you'll see a picture of that here. 
This is intended for microphones, but you can get ball head adapters with the appropriate mounting screw for camera gear. I've been using that setup for a while, and it's flexible enough that you can get pretty much any angle you want, so it's nothing fancy, and if I was to switch to a DSLR for making videos in the future, I'd probably have to come up with something a bit different and stronger, but it works well enough for the foreseeable future, and it was inexpensive to put together, which is really the main thing. If enough people want to see how I do this stuff and put my videos together, I might reconsider doing that video. I'll have to get a camera from somewhere, but it might be worth doing. No promises though, of course. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, Have you ever used Citadel's contrast paints? If not, would you be interested in trying some on one of your models? I've not tried Citadel's contrast paints. I haven't actually used any Citadel paints for probably close to 10 years now. I've seen a bunch of stuff about them, but I've never really felt the need for the contrast paints. Though, to be fair, I don't know that much about them. But I do know that Army Painter, at least I think it's Army Painter, has a similar product. And if I were to try something like that out, I think I would choose the Army Painter one. I've heard that it's quite a bit cheaper, and it comes in dropper bottles. Spanish Boy said, Have you listened to any war song bands before like Famous Sabaton, or the less famous Russian Cassad, or the Blue Berets? If you haven't, I would recommend them. Some really nice lyrics and music, but I would suggest YouTube channels with the translation. I've been a pretty big fan of Sabaton for a while, and I saw them a few years ago with a monomath. Of course, being Australia, we didn't get that cool tank drum riser, but it was still a really good show. I would say though that calling them war song bands doesn't really seem appropriate for Sabaton. It makes it sound like all they do is pro war songs to get people riled up to fight. And the people who are getting that sort of message out of Sabaton songs are people with poor media literacy. Obviously most of Sabaton's stuff does involve war history of some sort, though really it's more like here's a simplified history of something that's happened that we've kajigged to fit our music, rather than anything I would think of as war songs. I've never heard of Cassad and Google didn't help at all, and the Blue Berets, unless I'm not finding the one you're talking about, are a Russian military band, and it would be really easy just to say not interested because of that, but I did decide to watch a video. It didn't really do anything for me, it just seemed really bland and not very good. It's like they've got all the right things, you know, they've got the lyrics and the music, just no passion or energy or something, it lacks something. Hetz's Gunner Hetz said, Ever thought about giving one of your models a camo pattern using the most obnoxious combination of bright neon colours you can think of? I think most of you would be rather surprised if I said no, I haven't considered it. But I have. I have considered it. I don't actually have any neon coloured paints, which might also surprise you, but I have seen some around the place, like some from Scale 75 I think. Fluor? Fluor? I don't know how you'd say that, but something like that, and I have certainly considered getting some of those for some obnoxious colour shenanigans. Maybe next time I place an order for any model related things I'll think of getting some of those as well. Martin Gotham said, Have you had any kits that fought against you, not going the way you wanted it to? Of course. Not all the time, but often enough. I think the one that got to me the most was the Destroyer in the HMS Ark Royal kit I did a while ago. Some of you will remember that I stabbed that destroyer with my clippers. Take that. There was also the Airfix Bismarck that just wouldn't go together right no matter what I did, but I tried that before I was even making videos. Other than that, unless I'm forgetting something, I haven't had anything fight me so bad that I just stopped working on the model. Obviously things not fitting quite right and needing a bit of force isn't all that uncommon, so I guess how hard a model fights against you has varying degrees. A lot of them do fight a little bit, but most of them can be dealt with. In the YouTube comments of last month's Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, Trek and Belovich said, Hey, if you make a video talking about that in 2022, you'll do some changes to your videos so you get less viewers, this might give you some attention, and more viewers. Hey, yeah, reverse psychology, good idea. Hey, uh, I'm gonna make videos about, um, Whatever you personally dislike, stop watching my videos. You're not very good at this! Yeah, I know. Oh well. Maybe if I start doing those annoying thumbnails with the excited facial expression, and titles like WORST MODEL EVER, 
that would make me not want to watch, but would it actually bring more viewers? I don't know. Maybe. I don't think I'm going to do that anyway. Yan Tima said, Are you going to do any pink painting in 2022? I don't have any specific plans to do so, but you never know when the urge might strike. I'm certainly thinking about doing something neon like was mentioned earlier, but most of the things in my paint queue are fairly sensible. Maybe I should do something about that. Okay, so that's all the questions for this month. Let's have a look at some of the modelling work that's been shared in the Discord community. Sneaky Zaku shared this Black Watch Highlander for Battletech. This is cool, though I would have thought the Black Watch would be black, not green. Maybe they're just watching the blackness of night or something. It is a nice colour though. Also, I like that this guy seems to have a fist for punching. Very cool. Yan Tima shared this NF5B, which is, in my opinion, quite nicely painted up as a Norwegian plane, I think. I'm obviously not great at identifying plane markings. Looks nice though. I like how dirty the inside parts where the landing gear retract are, and the tarp behind the canopy is a nice touch as well. Yantima asked for thoughts on this, so if you've got something constructive to add, feel free to drop on by the modelling section of Discord and put some words there, or maybe pictures of your own work. That'd be cool too. Monol has finished this Tamiya T55. This awesome looking tank is in 148th scale. I really like the dust effect that's been done on the running gear here. It's nice and, well, not quite subtle, but it's not over the top, and it's rather convincing. Fantastic work. The big boy shared this tiny little Japanese tank. This is a 72nd scale Hargo from Dragon. The big boy says that this is quite an old kit, and he's restored it, which is why it's a bit rough around the edges. I think it looks really good though. I quite like the bright yellow lines that you see on Japanese camo. It's interesting, and you've done a really good job of it here. John the No shared some muddy Cadians. It seems like some of them might also be a bit bloody, or at least the ground beneath them is. Probably somebody else's blood. They seem a bit angry and quite violent. Might stay away from them. Very nice work though. Peter Enko has shared this Turan tank painted in Slovak camo. This is the IBG 72nd scale kit, and I've got to say, it looks really good. The tank looks nice and dirty, like it's been used fairly well, but it isn't absolutely filthy, and the dirt isn't over the top. It's tastefully dirty. That seems like a good way to put it. Very nice work. Okay, that's all of the models for this month. Obviously it's not everything that's been shared on Discord, and if you do want to see everything, feel free to drop on by the server and have a look around. As always, I'm very thankful to those who share their models, ask the questions, and especially I'm thankful to those who support me on Patreon or through Twitch subscriptions. It's very nice of you. Ask a Herbert Herbert Up will return next month, so if you've got a question, you know where it goes, I assume. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low, low price of absolutely nothing? Or if you've got the means and you want to help me do the things I do, and see my videos a bit early, and be able to voice your own questions with your own voice in Ask a Herbert Herbert Herb, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. And, as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.